So this is um, a bit of an unusual situation, <laughs> uh, but we've had quite an unusual four years, really, when you think about it. Mm -hmm. We have. Um, <laughs> and it's funny because like, even doing this today, I kind of reflect back and think, oh my goodness, as a family, we have come so far, um, and particularly me and you as well. Um, and I suppose it makes me think, like, did you ever have a time, um, well, more, it makes me think there's more when I think about when I was in France in the rehab centre, particularly then, you know, having such intense therapy away from the family. Did you ever have a time where you sort of thought, will we ever get back to a sense of normality? I think the time when you were in hospital was when we did most of our thinking and talking. Because, yeah, we, Dad and I both couldn't see any way back to normality. Mm. Because you were so badly injured. This is immediately after. Yeah, this yeah. immediately afterwards. And we were told that you would be scarred for life. And it brought out all mm -hmm. sorts of, you know, scenarios. You know, what will she do for a living? Where will she live? How capable will she be of earning a living? You know, we had no idea what, how, how your injuries would affect your future. So, you know, thinking ahead, it was just one big black hole, really. So in that time, like, I mean, you and Dad were so amazing. I mean, the whole family, Paul and Susie, um, in those early days, um, you were all so great. Um, and I know we've kind of talked before um, about how hard it was. And, you know, I'm quite a difficult, demanding person anyway. <laughs> um, and it must have been really hard. And, like, nothing could prepare like a parent for what happened to me. Mm. Um, so, it was, and it was all quite instant. Like, how did you deal with it all? And, you know, was it Mr. Jawad and like the Chelsea staff who were kind of central to keeping you positive in the very early days? I think, yeah, when you're in hospital, there was so much going on. You know, we had the police, we had meetings with the police nearly every day, meetings with the doctors, the psychologist. There was so much going on that, yeah, that, that kept us going. And, you know, Mr. Joward was, he was such a great support. You know, he said, he, right from the very beginning, he said, I promise you, I will get her back. And I, I will get her. <laughs> Did he say that? Yeah, he said, I promise you, I'll get her back. He said, you will have your daughter back. Oh, that's so touching. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, so it was, it was difficult. But the, I think the times were probably worse was in the evenings at night when, if, you know, you'd gone settled for the night and it was just Dad and I in our little room and... That was a time when you know we used to talk about it and think what on earth is going to happen how is she going to be tomorrow you know mm. so yeah there was some um, quite a lot of worry there it's quite nice to think though, that the medical staff as well as doing their job and 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 sort of the physical stuff they gave you hope as well by caring and you yeah know, they were really because we got to know them quite well we were there for so long yeah we got to know the staff, the staff. The <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> no, so yeah, they did. They were really good. In the, that Burns unit, you couldn't fault it. They were fantastic, really good. And I know, like, when we left the hospital, like, I suppose a normal person would think being discharged from hospital was the end of a journey. But I think, really, as a family, for us, it was the beginning because mm. we were going home mm. to do physio and the battle really started. And I know for you, you just gave up your work, your job mm. for a long time. And, and it really, you kind of gave up your life mm. to be um, a carer for me, which I know you would do in a heartbeat mm. for any... Oh, you would do uh, that. Any kids. parent would do that. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But I mean, was it like, did it worry you, like the prospect of, of become, becoming a carer for me, one of, like, out of the three children, the most sort of independent one that left home quite young? And, you know. No, it never worried me at all because that's what I wanted to do it. So it never worried me. No, not at all. I would have done anything. I would have given not work. Well, I was prepared to give up work. I was going to hand in my notice and give up work and just stay at home and look after you because, you know, I've been doing it, looking yeah. after children for so long, it just comes second nature. So it was, it was never a worry. It was just, assume, I just assumed I would do it. Obviously, like, you're a mother, you've got maternal instincts, you've brought me, Paul and Susie up and we had an amazing childhood and also your job working with children mm. in a school. But was it, like, uh, instinct or was it a learning curve like when you became my carer like how did you know what to do in like things you were the one that persuaded me to leave the house you take me out to buy clothes like how did you know how to do all that how did it I think the, the medical side of it worried me a bit because you know one day you're in hospital mm. then they're saying right off you go 
here's her bag of medication. You've got to do this, Back that, and the other. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they had showed us they had showed us how to do the massage and the, the cleaning of your face and all that sort of stuff. But it was a bit daunting to do begin with. Do you remember with. when you when I first they had to clean the face and I had all the skin coming off, yeah. and then they were like going to you, just rub it all off, and you're like, I can't rub. I skin was really off. scared because I had to clean all your face, and all these lumps were coming off. Yeah, and and I thought, oh my god, I've taken her skin grafts off. Yeah. <laughs> I'm taking it. I must admit, I was quite worried. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, things like your feeding tube. You yeah. know, we had a, a nurse in hospital show me how to use your feeding tube, but when you're at home, that's it, you're on your own. Was it quite overwhelming? Well, we did it together. Dad and I did it together. You know, there's times, you know, trying to fit the tube into the bag of liquid and it would leak everywhere. And the, But the good thing is that if I got distressed or frustrated, then Dad would take over. So it was a two, I, I think it would have been very hard on your own. If you were a single parent. If you're a single yeah. parent, if you didn't have any way of letting off steam and you know, somebody else to take over. And of course, Susie and Paul helped. You know, mm. Susie was there to do the, the girly things with you and do your nails together and just, just chat to you about, about things that young people chat about rather than being stuck with me and dad all the time. And this question, it's quite, it's one I think about myself as well. And I don't really know if you can even answer this, but um, how long did it take for you to realize the reality um, of what had happened to me and what it meant to us as a family? Mm, that is a difficult one. I don't know, it's the sort of thing when you first, when it first happened, I think you're in a state of shock. Mm. I don't think it really sank in for days what had happened. And the seriousness of it didn't sink in for mm. days. It was only, you know, having regular meetings with the doctors. And it was um, the lady doctor you had one day and she said, um, you do realise that Katie will be scarred for life. Mm. And that, that was a bit of a shock, really, because I hadn't really thought about it that deeply. But I thought, yes, you've been injured, but you'll get better. And then when she said, you'll be scarred for life, and then I thought of Simon Weston. Mm. <laughs> I thought, oh, is that, you know, is she saying that that's the sort of scarring you will have forever? Mm. So it was, it was, that bit was quite hard to take in. But I don't know. Yeah, it is, it is a difficult question to answer, really. Yeah. But you know, also in, in a positive way, I think that um, the great thing is we've all become really close, you know, mm. me, you, Dad, Paul, Suze, and uh, I think that that was one of the things that kept us strong because instead of it breaking us all up, it brought us all together. Mm. Um, oh, definitely. And the yeah. laughter as well, <coughs> I yeah. think. It, yeah. To an outsider, it would almost sound inappropriate to mm. say, even in the hospital in yeah. the early days, we were laughing, um, we managed to get through some of the worst times together. Yeah. Do you remember like, how much I hated the feeding tube? Do you remember when the blackberries came out yeah. of the feeding tube? I'd, had, I'd eaten too many blackberries, left my plug off my feeding tube, laughed, and blackberry juice squirted up my stomach. <laughs> Which some people might feel like, oh, you shouldn't laugh at that. But, you know, we had... Even in hospital, we were, you know, Dad would show you your get well cards and he'd, he'd read them out to you because that? we were so bored we thought what can we do and I, I used to read you stories out of magazines and dad would say shall I show you your get well cards you know this one's from your <laughs> yeah. friend and you go dad you did that yesterday have you got like a, a really funny memory that stands out to you that got kind of got us through it all and when you were had to wear those um, pressure garments because you had a like a balaclava yeah. you had a full body suit <laughs> that went down to your waist all in this stretchy tight lycra yeah and Flash colours, well, i've got a photograph <laughs> of you standing there with your feeding tube and you're twirling your feeding <laughs> tube round <laughs> and posing like you used to when you did your modeling <laughs> and then paul said oh you look just like earthworm jim <laughs> i think actually when people do interview me and when people have interviewed you in the past they often ask you about kind of like what was the worst time what's the most traumatic time and I wonder if that's because people think there can't be any positive memories mm -hmm. and do you have any times that actually do stand out as a positive memory because we know in like it, because we've been to every operation together we have had times when mm -hmm. we've sort of thought this is great it's on yeah. the up and yeah. I suppose people would see it as all doom and gloom yeah. but there were times you know I mean every operation you had produced a good result you know when you had all the releases on your neck and you could move your head properly and you had your throat done so you could eat properly you know there's lots of little positive things all going going on yeah. you know when you ate your first solid food you know it was a bit mushed up when I came <laughs> off the baby food yeah. Do you remember that grandpa yeah. Sunday lunch yeah. baby food <laughs> yeah. and custard yeah. you had 
every flavour of custard available. I can't available. even eat custard now because I ate it for so long. It but eating your first solid food, well, that was a big yeah. plus. It's like having yeah. a baby again. Yeah. And, get, and taking off your feeding tube. You know, when they, they said you, you know, you're eating properly, you can manage without it. That was mm. another big, big positive thing. I think for me, because um, I don't reflect so much, but um, in writing this new book, it's given me a lot of time to reflect because I've been going through old journals and diaries mm -hmm. and I've been thinking about methodically what was the journey, how did I get to where I was mm -hmm. in order to write down um, some of the stuff. And I think one thing, I don't really know if I've ever even really told you this so much, but one thing I'll always be so grateful um, to you for was persuading me to go to the French Rehab Centre. Mm. Because I do actually remember, I was really underweight, I had malnutrition, I was so ill, and I remember saying to you, I don't want to go, there's no point, this is a permanent injury, there's nothing anyone can do for me. Mm. And I remember you saying to me, well, we'll just go for a week, we'll see, you know, just give it a go, you've got nothing to lose. And, you know, how, how did you persuade me to go? Like, I, I wouldn't have gone. I know, exactly. I don't, looking back on it, I don't know how we did, because you hadn't left the house, apart from going it's to hospi hospital appointments. But Mr. Jowett, had, obviously, he knew he'd heard about it. And we went for that day visit, didn't we? We went in, went in the morning, came back. Oh, no, we had one night there, the didn't holiday, we? Yeah, on yeah. the bank holiday. And he was just so enthusiastic about it. And um, the doctor there had said, yes, we could help you. So we thought, well, you've got to go for it. It doesn't matter what it, you know. It doesn't matter what it costs. It doesn't matter. You've got to go for it. But you, but you were. You want. Obviously, we all wanted the best, didn't we? We wanted mm. the best for each other. But I think I really. I don't know how you did it. I admire you for doing that because you were thrown in the deep end, weren't you? I know we we stayed with you the first couple of times, mm. but eventually you went out on your own. With my. Uh, GCSE D in yeah, French. Yeah, French. <laughs> and, you know, you coped. You lived in this foreign country. You ate there, you slept there, you had treatments there. And you even managed to make friends there, which, I know, absolutely yeah. staggered me. I thought, absolutely amazing that you could do something like that. I'm so glad you persuaded me yeah. to go. And the difference in you, not just physically with the physical treatment, but mentally, you came back so positive every time. You were full of beans, you were full of energy. You had such a change in attitude after being there. And do you think that that attitude and like sort of you've always said to me that I've always been quite headstrong mm -hmm. <laughs> and determined. And it, is that something you just see in me now, or, or is that something you, you've seen in me growing up? Like, what, was I like that as a no, really yeah, little you, girl? Or you've always been quite determined, quite stubborn, quite keen to do things your way. <laughs> And you're always the sort of person who acted first and then said, guess what I've done? But well, even as like a toddler? And yeah, it, yeah, well, not as a child, not, but even as a toddler, yeah, you were, you were very laid back. You know, you didn't panic about things. You, were, you didn't mind about being left with other people. If I went to work, you were left with friends and you were fine. And wherever you went, you made friends. When we went on holiday yeah. and we joined the... Jonathan. Yeah, you joined the... Um, <coughs> kids clubs you know whenever we went you were always the first one to make friends um do you remember when my bedroom was downstairs by the kitchen and i used to cut my hair off with the kitchen scissors and put mm. food coloring in it and, stuff? Yeah. <laughs> and yes. pierce my ears with the with the oh, safety pin pierced your own ears with a safety all up pin the side, yeah. yeah i had to take you to the doctor because it all went septic and that's the ear that got melted the one that i had that little um yeah. thing for the ear and then when yeah. you were fed up with your wallpaper you started peeling it off a little bit every but night. denying it and saying, I don't know how it's happening. <laughs> yeah, because I hated the strawberry shortcake yeah. girls. Well, you were about, probably about 12 at the yeah. time. <laughs> now, I'm living back in London, and in October, it will be almost two years um, that I've been living on my own. Um, like, were you worried about me living alone? And, you know, how do, how do you feel about it now? I was very worried. And we had never really sort of planned that day. We'd never said, right, you know, at the end of the year, I think you should move out. We'd never, never, never put any time limit on it, on it. But gradually, you were beginning to move. You know, you were staying with friends in London. Um, and you were coming back. And instead of staying at home with us, you were meeting friends and going out around locally with friends. So we were seeing less and less of you. So you were gradually moving away, get, so regaining your independence. So it wasn't a sudden... <coughs> You know, right, I'm going tomorrow. It, we, it was a gradual thing. Mm. But then when you actually said, yes, you know, I really am, I, I'm actually look, looking for flats, it was a bit, oh, my goodness, are you sure you're ready? Mm. But, you know, it was, it was the right thing to do. But I think probably if you'd asked us first, we would have said, oh, no, you're not ready, you're not ready. 
But as usual, you didn't ask us, you just told us. <laughs> <laughs> I am looking at flats. <laughs> so now does it feel completely normal? Yeah, like it does. Susie lives yeah, it's the, the best thing you could have yeah. ever done. Yeah. You've got so many friends now. So kind of looking back on it all, good, bad, right from the beginning to present day, what, what surprised you the most? Well, the way you've come back, the way you've coped with it all. That's, you know, your courage, your... So was there a time when you didn't think I w would cope with it all then, do you think? Difficult one, because <laughs> I know you do have courage. I know you are brave, but I think you, you had to show extra strength for, to get over what you've got over. Mm. And the fact also that you've given something back, that you've reached out to other people, you've inspired other people, you've helped other people. You haven't just said, right, this is me, I want to get better. I just want to get on with my life. Thank you very much for my treatment. Goodbye. You know, you have just carried on giving all the time, helping other people, mentoring people, visiting people, setting up the charity. Mm. You know, and it's, it's fantastic <coughs> the amount of, of work you put into it. What would you say um, have been the moments, like as a mother, that you'll most treasure over the last, probably not really four years, more the last two years? Yeah, I, suppose, the last, really. I mean, the last two years have been yeah. where we've had good times together, haven't we? You know, yeah. we've had award ceremonies <laughs> to go to, and I've had to get all glammed up and meeting famous people. You know, that's been really good. Philip meeting Philip Schofield was <laughs> the highlight, long -time crush. highlight of my life. <laughs> <laughs> um, Simon Cowell, yeah. your ball, that you, your oh, fundraising September. ball in yeah. September, that was absolutely fantastic. You know, I sat there at that table looking around the Savoy, thinking, you know, this is unbelievable, really, that she's got this far. Yeah, yeah awesome. so we've had some really good moments. We've shared some really fun times. I think for me, my most treasured memory um, of, every <clears throat> of everything is kind of, oh my gosh, I'm like really emotional. <laughs> um, <clears throat> For me, it's looking back to the launch of the foundation. Mm. Remember at Simon Cowell's offices? Oh, yes. And I remember like doing my speech and I was really nervous because yeah. there were like press there and everyone. Um, and I remember like looking out and seeing you and dad in the audience um, and kind of like seeing all my family around me, my uncles, my cousins, yeah. and thinking like, you know, what you'd all done for me and what I've learned from it. Um, and just how you brought me up as well, like before everything. Um, but I think, for me, it feels strange to be told I'm an inspiration because in that room that day, I was like, this is the reason I'm here because of all these people, Mr. Jawad, my parents. Mm. So it's not like one person on their own and the charity is not run just by me. You know, it's, it's a group of people like supporting each other. Um, and people describe you as inspirational mm. to me all the time when people talk about you to me. And does it feel strange for you to be described in that It way? does. It definitely does. Because I don't think I've done anything that any normal parent wouldn't do. Mm. And it has come from you. It really has come from you. Because if you had turned around and said, you know, I never want to face the world again. You know, my life has ended. We would have said, OK, come and live at home. We'll look after you. Of, you know, we would have tried to have got you out and about a bit. But we, no, not to the extent that you you have done for yourself you have done it you know don't take don't <laughs> imagine if you got stuck with me for life <laughs> 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 Not really. um i think another part um a great a great side that i saw to you as well um was when we went on to make their program my beautiful friends and i saw the footage um because i hadn't been in the house the day you were filming this particular um meeting with adele's mum mm -hmm. And I only got to see it when mm. it was on telly. And, mm. and you know, Adele's a bird survivor like me, similar mm. age to me. And I just thought you were really great um, yeah. with Adele's mum and sort of that shared experience and, and support and, you know, helping other bird survivors and their families is so important. And I know you're quite involved with the charity as well. You were a volunteer sometimes as well and you helped me. But meeting Adele's mum was really good because she, I felt she was very much like me. Yeah. She, she felt the same thing. She wanted to protect Adele. She was worried about Adele going out. Uh, she was worried about Adele showing her scars. You know, she wanted her to cover up. She didn't like people staring at her, obviously. Yeah. And like the same with me. I didn't like, like it when people stared at you or made little muttered comments, you know, as we walked past them. So, you know, I, we had an awful lot in common and we got on very well. And she had a lot of issues because Adele's injury was different to yours you know she was actually in the house at the time so mm -hmm. she had a lot of guilt she also had the trauma of actually seeing her daughter minutes after it had happened mm -hmm. I mean we were spared that trauma so and I think she found it 
quite helpful to talk to me about it and realise that her feelings were quite normal and natural for considering what had happened. Mm. So, yeah, we were a good support to each other. Yeah. And so I, I guess it's like, it's a natural role for to you as a parent to another parent to have done that and like having the same similarities with the daughters. And I know when I set up the charity, um, you were a massive help to me answering some of the letters and the emails had come in and you've been up to the office on your days off and things like that. Um, and sort of looking at the charity when it first started, is it quite unbelievable for you to think how far that's come? Absolutely and unbelievable. I, mean, the the day I ran it from my laptop in my yeah. bedroom at home at first. And the about. day you moved into your office was, wow, this is fantastic. And I got a little box and a stapler. Oh, yeah. Do you <laughs> and a notepad that? Yeah. and a file. And yeah. so, you know, here's your stuff. Which drawer do you want your stapler in? <laughs> <laughs> and it would just seem so amateurish compared yeah. to what it is now. But my God, you've worked hard on it, though, haven't you? It's funny. To, right. I, I forgot you know, about that. From day before. one, you worked. You worked on that, and you're on your own in the office, weren't you? I know. You used yeah. to just go in there, and that was before you'd actually left home. Because yeah, I can remember I you joking about should I take a sleeping bag and sleep in the office because <laughs> I'm I'm working so late. Know. You know, by the time I get home, it's going to be. So, um, like my life's changed quite a lot, and now sometimes um, in London, I uh, people stop me in the street because maybe they've read the book or they've seen the program. Um, do you ever get people stopping you or recognising you? I'd love to say yes, but no, I don't. <laughs> not, not even once, ever? No, never, never. Never, never no. has someone said to you, oh, are you the mother with the no. girl that got burned? Not even like walking around our hometown. Really? Dad gets stopped an awful lot. Do you think you're and too aloof course, and unapproachable? Yeah, I think <laughs> so. Dad's, Dad's customers, you know, they talk yeah. about him all the time. I've had uh, some of the mums at school, some of yeah. the parents have said, you know, and everybody I work with asks after you, but... That's got quite a recognisable beard. Yeah. Or they think it's Kenny Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I've never been stopped in the street. No. Uh, okay, well, finally, one more question. Um, if someone told you kind of four years ago that we'd be sitting here now um, in the place that we are, um, could you have believed it? No, I would not have believed it, no. If someone had told me four years ago that half, half the things have, that we've done together had happened, I wouldn't believe it. So yeah. what do you think... Um, the future holds um, for both of us? Well, I don't know. I think you will go onwards and upwards, to be honest. I don't think there's any limits now to what you will do. You, will, you can do whatever you want to do now. Nothing's going to stop you. Nothing's going to get in your way. Can I dye my hair red and cut it short? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Dad and I will carry on. We're enjoying our freedom now. All you kids are, are busy and and uh, we'll just get back, well, as they get back to normal, what is normal? There isn't normal, is there? Mm. But we can all resume our lives and, and look forward to the future. So onwards and up. Onwards and up. So things really do get better. Like yeah, the they do, but they do get better. Oh. And it's all, thanks, <laughs> no, it's all thanks to you. You have been amazing. <laughs> <laughs> We're going. Uh -oh.